This lecture introduces the idea of photons and using the Planck constant to find a photon's energy. A photon is a particle, specifically it's a particle of light. All light is made of photons. All photons move at the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. We use the symbol lowercase c to stand in for that constant. Photons are both waves and particles. There's no clear way to visualize this at all. We cannot really represent what a photon really looks like, quote unquote, using pictures, because there's not really a way that photons actually appear. So even though we can't visualize them, I'm going to be using this symbol to represent photons in the lectures going forward. It's not at all what photons actually look like, just a useful visual for a particle and a wave. Obviously, it's very strange that photons are both particles and waves. There are complicated reasons for why they behave like both. I'll go into that a little bit in future lectures, but I've also left some additional lectures in the description of this video explaining it more. So again, that symbol is not at all what photons actually look like. It's just a way to symbolize the wavelength and the particle at the same time. Photons are specifically electromagnetic waves, which is a topic that we've already covered in the course. So if you're watching this and you haven't watched the electromagnetic waves lecture yet, I would encourage you to do that just to have a complete understanding of what kind of thing photons fundamentally are. So that lecture goes into a lot more detail about how electromagnetic waves work and their properties. So this lecture is assuming that you've already seen that video or at least know the basics of what an electromagnetic wave is. Photons carry energy. We call the energy of light luminous energy. The amount of energy a photon carries is based on its wavelength. Photons with smaller wavelengths and larger frequencies carry more energy. So students sometimes forget whether it's a larger wavelength or a smaller wavelength that carries more energy. And I use this in the EM wave video as well, but I'm gonna use this analogy again. I'm going to imagine that I'm standing in the ocean and I try to think about if the amplitude of the waves are equal, would I rather be hit by a wave with a long wavelength and small frequency or a short wavelength and a high frequency? And if I think about which one I would rather be hit by, it becomes pretty clear that the wave with the smaller wavelength is going to be much more painful to experience because it's going to be delivering a lot more energy in the same amount of time. So if the wavelength of the wave in water is shorter, it's going to be delivering more energy. And so in the same way, photons with smaller wavelengths and higher frequencies deliver more energy than longer wavelength photons. To understand exactly how much energy a photon carries, we use a physical constant which relates a single photon's frequency in hertz to its energy in joules, the Planck constant. We symbolize the Planck constant with lowercase h. So this is the exact value of the Planck constant. 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34th joule seconds. So what this number is telling me is this is the exact amount of energy in a photon per hertz of frequency. So if a photon's frequency is one hertz, that means that the amount of energy it contains is exactly 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34th joules. And if a photon has a frequency of two hertz, its energy is two times the Planck constant. And if it's five hertz, it's five times the Planck constant. So the Planck constant is the energy per frequency of the electron. And so an equation for the Planck constant is the energy a photon contains over the frequency of the photon. As a quick explanation of the unit, you'll notice that the unit is joule seconds. I can see that the unit of energy over frequency would be joules per hertz because hertz is the unit of frequency. If I rearrange that, I get joules times one over hertz. And I know that hertz is equal to one over seconds. So if I rearrange that to solve for one over hertz, I can see that seconds on its own is equal to one over hertz. So that means that the unit of energy over frequency is equal to a joule second, joules multiplied by seconds like that. So that's why the Planck constant has the unit that it does. I can prove a few more equations by combining this identity with a few others. First of all, if I rearrange this equation for the Planck constant, I can see that energy is equal to the Planck constant times the frequency. So that's gonna be one equation that we use a lot. I can also rewrite this in terms of the wavelength of the wave because I know that the velocity of a wave is the wavelength times the frequency. Rearranging for frequency gets me velocity over wavelength. And because we're dealing with light, the velocity is going to be a constant C. So I can replace V with C in this equation. So the frequency of a photon is equal to C, the speed of light over the photon's wavelength. And I know that C is equal to 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. So I can replace F in my equation with C over lambda. And when I do that, this is what I get. And if I rearrange this to find the wavelength, I get this equation here by multiplying both sides by lambda and dividing both sides by E. So these two facts here are constants that you're given on every test. 
you would never have to memorize the Planck constant or the speed of light. Those are given in your data booklet. And these two equations are also given in your data booklet. So the equation on the top tells you how to find the energy of a photon if you have its frequency. And the equation on the bottom tells you how to find the wavelength of a photon if you have its energy. Because you always know the speed of light and the Planck constant. So you would just need to worry about the energy to find its wavelength. So we now have a way of connecting the frequency, the wavelength, and the energy of any photon that we're dealing with. So I'm going to keep these equations up here and do a few examples with them in just a moment. Before we go into that, I just need to note, when we're dealing with photons, energy is often reported in electron volts or EV. To convert from electron volts to joules, remember that one electron volt is equal to the charge of one electron multiplied by one volt. So multiplying that out, I find that one electron volt is equal to 1.60 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. If you've forgotten how electron volts work, I've left a link to my lecture on electron volts in the video description. There will also be times when you need to identify what type of EM wave a photon is based on its energy. To do this, you would solve for its frequency or wavelength and use that to identify where the photon is on the EM spectrum. So again, I talk about this spectrum a lot more in my electromagnetic waves lecture, which I've linked in the description. Okay, let's do some examples with these new equations. What is the wavelength of a photon which has an energy of 38 electron volts? So we're trying to find the wavelength. We know the Planck constant that's always given, and we also know the speed of light. And we also have the energy as 38 electron volts. Because the Planck constant works with joules and not electron volts, I'll have to convert to joules before solving the problem. So I'll use the factor label method for that, where I know that for every one electron volt, there is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. So multiplying that out gets me an energy of 6.08 times 10 to the negative 18th joules. So I now have enough information to solve the problem because looking at my equation, I only have one missing variable. And if I only have one missing variable, I can plug in my numbers. So when I plug in my numbers here, I find that the wavelength is equal to 3.27 times 10 to the negative eighth meters. So that's kind of cool. If you know exactly how much energy a single photon contains, you also automatically know the exact wavelength of the photon. Example two says, what is the frequency of a photon with an energy of 112 electron volts? So now we're looking for the frequency. As usual, we're given the Planck constant, and we know the energy is 112 electron volts. Converting that to joules gets me 1.79 times 10 to the negative 17th joules. So the energy is the Planck constant times the frequency. Isolating the frequency there gets me the energy over the Planck constant, so I plug that in. And you'll notice the units also work here where my final unit will be one over seconds because the joules cancel out and that's equal to Hertz. So the frequency of this photon is equal to 2.70 times 10 to the 16th Hertz. So again, if you're given the energy, you can always automatically calculate the frequency of the photon. Example number three says, what is the energy in electron volts of a photon with a wavelength of 6.5 times 10 to the negative seventh meters? So now we're looking for the energy and we know the Planck constant, and we know the wavelength, and we'll also need the speed of light here because that's going to show up in the equation. So I'll plug this in and start by isolating energy in the equation. When I do that, this is the equation that I get for energy. And then I plug in my numbers, and I get an answer of 3.06 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. But I want that answer in electron volts, not joules, because that's what the problem is asking for. So to convert from joules to electron volts, I use the factor label method. And I find that this is equal to 1.91 electron volts. So that's exactly how much energy a photon would have if it had that exact wavelength. Finally, example number four says, what is the energy in joules of a photon with a frequency of two times 10 to the sixth hertz? So I'm looking for the energy, I have the Planck constant, and I have the frequency. So this is a pretty simple equation. I just plug it into E equals Planck constant times frequency. And when I do that, I find a final answer of 1.33 times 10 to the negative 27 joules. So that's everything that you need to know about the connection between the frequency, wavelength, and energy that photons contain.